this out without laughing. Flames fans booed their flames off the ice, and Daryl Sutter decided to laugh it off. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. The Flames have lost five in a row and are dropping to draft lottery territory And we just, we have a lot to unpack today. I've actually been looking forward to recording this episode since Saturday night. And there's just so much to unpack ahead of tonight's game against the Dallas Stars, which is going to have the exact opposite feel of how the playoffs did. But first, uh, remember to follow Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts. We're available for free on Spotify, Apple, Audible, Amazon Music, uh, the list goes on and on. And of course, we're available on YouTube. So (laughs) Saturday night, um, the Flames lost. And this was the first game since the trade deadline. And nothing really changed. Uh, Nick Ritchie was scratched. So, you know, really uh, starting off strong there with those big moves. But the Flames ended up getting booed off the ice uh, deservedly so. Uh, I don't think that the flame that those boos were truly directed at the flames. I think that uh, they were directed at a certain man who is playing Sims with his lines and coaching that team uh, and orchestrating what's going out um, the product on the ice. And uh, Daryl Sutter laughed in his post game media availability. And to me, that is very. Um, just uncomfortable it's not like a (laughs) yeah like I I didn't do a good job it was like (laughs) yeah like they they got booed they got booed off the ice and he's laughing at them like that's number one that's so disrespectful uh to the team that you coach to the just the nature of the room I think and I think if any other coach laughed at their players, (sighs) we would be having an entirely different conversation. Like, I feel like that would be strike three and that coach is out based on how the players are performing on ice, how the players are coaching, or sorry, how the players are being coached and versus the product they're putting out there because we know that the Flames team can perform at a higher level. I mean, we don't because we haven't seen it, but... I would assume that if they had a coach that was a little bit more receptive, things might look a little different. But I I don't understand what you're laughing at because their performance on the ice also reflects how you're doing your job. It's not realistic to have three lines going 17 minutes a night and having your uh, fourth line out there doing doing some cardio for 10 minutes. I think that it's just, uh, just, that's not how you win games. That's not how you really construct a team in 2023. You know, I don't, I, I know that we talk a lot about this being a copycat league, but my God, what, what a disaster. It's so humiliating to, like watch your boss laugh at like what you're doing and not in like a funny way, but in like a, Oh my God, that's so degrading. Uh, Again, I think this is one of those situations where we know if there was any, if it was any other person behind that bench, they would be gone. They wouldn't have the opportunity to do this. I, I have not seen players look so defeated after regular season losses before unless these are losses that are getting them bounced from playoff contention right and the game against Toronto Blake Coleman and Kadri looked so so defeated as if they had just been eliminated in a game seven and both of them know 
what that feels like. And it's, it, it's upsetting to watch, you know, because you come into this season with these expectations and your coach can't even take it seriously anymore. And then we're going to talk about it next, but the lines he's assembling for tonight, it's just, it's an even bigger, like, laugh in your face and just kind of like, I guess just like a big screw you to the players that want to do better. And it's unfortunate. And we're going to talk about that next, but um, (sighs) enough is enough, man. Like, at this point, I think I, I'm like 90% sure Brad Tree Living knows he's not coming back. I think the consensus the consensus there is that um, you know, the Flames will have a new coach next year, but it's going to be someone that Daryl Sutter hires. Does Brent retire from the AHL and immediately jump into a coaching position? Uh, with the Flames, I don't know. We saw last time Sutter was uh, Flames general manager. He employed like three of his four brothers. So, I mean, again, anything's possible. Uh, whoever gets Brad Tree Living, I will say, is probably the luckiest organization in the NHL. I hope that he doesn't go to a team that is in the Pacific or the West for our sake. But at the same time, I hope he does. So we can, so he can spite those teams, spite the Flames ownership, really. But um, let's take a quick minute to talk about Athletic Greens. I actually saw Tyler Toffoli post about Athletic Greens on his Instagram story the other day. So, hello, Tyler Toffoli. Our next product has a, uh, our next partner has a product that I like to use every day to help boost my immune system, especially, especially where I am traveling after just. Um, getting over a really nasty virus. And of course, with AG1, you don't have to take a fist full of supplements, which I think is fantastic. It's one scoop in your cup of water every day, 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. So you know that you are getting a whole bunch of goodness. And what I love is that you know, you get all of those multivitamins and it's important that you're choosing high quality ones and high quality ingredients that your body will absorb and, you know, start to actually pump through and make you feel better, right? And it's important to note that this does cost less than $3 a day, which is about half the price of a Starbucks drink sometimes, right? Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. Give it a little stir, and there's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. I have mine ready to go when I fly out to L.A. to see the flames on a back-to-back. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com. Uh, slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And thank you for following along uh, with me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. If you're interested, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. One thing that I think the general consensus on Twitter today was, uh, besides the app not working, was why is Walker Dewar coming out of the lineup when, you know, obviously so Nick Ritchie can slot in, but there's obviously a much um, simpler solution to this problem. I think that, uh, you know, we're all going to say it. Ready? One, two, three. Milan Lucic would do, (laughs) you know, uh, having Walker Dewar in your lineup is going, it, it's more effective. You might get a little bit of production. Who knows? But, you know, Daryl Sutter is kind of like embracing this loser mentality that's going on here or just, or not. Or he just thinks that this is the best decision that he can make for his team. And there's no point in trying to 
you know, really shake things up. We, we're just seeing these minor tweaks. You know, no one is, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, we aren't seeing Lucic up on that top or that second line and pelts coming down and things like that. We're just seeing tweaks that really don't do anything. Uh, but then at the same time, like I just said, you have to kind of weigh out the pros and cons. Uh, but there's there was no major punch or impact at the trade deadline. The biggest shock of it all was the fact that uh, Brett and Nick Ritchie were the first brothers in NHL history to be traded for each other. That's all it was. Excuse me. Um, you know, you get Nick Ritchie, who is this big body dude who has 21 points in 59 games. You know, you're not, you're getting a guy who scores nine goals and. I think most of those have been flukes. You know, Nick Ritchie, he had a good run in Toronto, I will say. But it's not something that I look at as an addition and say, aha, this will, uh, you know, save the season. I, I don't think that the Flames were in a position to save the season. Uh, they they weren't interested in selling either, which again kind of speaks to the, uh, you know, what they believe in their roster. So I, I don't really, I, I don't like this. I don't enjoy the constant, oh, well, you know, if they just did this and they just did that, like it's, again, it's not that simple. This isn't uh, a video game, but I feel like there really are solutions that could really jumpstart this team. They they keep falling further and further out of the playoff picture. This isn't something that you have a lot of time to redeem, you know? it's This isn't one of those instances in November where, you know, you go on that seven, eight game losing streak and you can redeem yourself before Christmas. We don't have that time. The All-Star game is passed. The trade deadline has passed. Teams are really starting to lock in those spots. So you really do have to look at this and say, is it even worth playing, you know, for this 100%? Do you just kind of just go out there every night, do what you can, clock in, clock out, and just hope for next season? Hope there is some sort of, you know, I, I don't know what the word is. You know, do you want to slip into draft lottery contention? Is that, is that what you want? Because right now you're stuck in the middle. Like we talked about last week, they're stuck between a hard place and a hard place. There, There's no easy way out of this because, you know, if you make the, if you make the playoffs, you're making that second wild card spot going up against the better, the best team. And then if you, lose <laughs> you've essentially failed and get eliminated from playoff contention uh your general manager looks like they can't do their job when in reality it's the coach and you're not doing anything and if you just keep drafting at 16 17 18 you aren't getting those high-end picks that you need yes there might be a sleeper we don't know that we never know that until <laughs> until the end, you know, until later on in their career. And it is just very frustrating to do that day in and day out, year after year, with mediocre, perpetual mediocrity. We talk about it all the time on Twitter. And it's it, it can be exhausting. And I get it. I get why players want better. I 200% believe that they're kind of done with what's going on because you can only <laughs> put up with so much for so long and it's just very uh, what's the word I'm like, like how much longer let's be honest how much longer until someone barricades him out of the locker room I'm just I'm truly just wondering I don't don't want it to happen because that draws all sorts of sorts of negative attention and then you get another Alan Walsh tweet 
But at what point do the players make a stand? At what point? Because I, I'm starting to starting to worry here. <laughs> but coming up next, we're going to wrap up the show with a little bit of a game preview. Heading into Dallas tonight because it's not going to feel how it did when, uh, you know, last May. But before we do that, let me tell you about one of my favorite snacks that I have added to my day. Because I love, I have such a horrible sweet tooth. I literally have cupcakes cooling so I can frost them before the game tonight. But this, unlike these cupcakes, <laughs> Built Bar is low in fat, low in calories, low in carbs. But it still tastes so good. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And now you can get them at the store as well. If you are near a Walmart or a Sam's Club, you can head to build, uh, head to the pharmacy section to get your Built Bars. And at Sam's Club, they have the brownie batter and churro flavors, as well as the cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs available at Walmart. And with Built Bars, you get that delicious tasting protein bar that fills you up, holds you over, gets you through your day, all while eating something that tastes like a candy bar. And if you don't have the uh, Walmart or Sam's Club in your area, you can still order online at built.com. And thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to Lockdown Flames wherever you get your podcasts. The first thing I think of when I think of the Dallas Stars is, of course, their goaltending and Jason Robertson, two top-tier difference makers for the Stars. I will eat my hat and say that, that my take of them regressing aged like milk. I thought that this year was going to be kind of, you know, a slippery slope for them. And it hasn't been. They are <laughs> currently 34, 16, and 13. So they're kind of like the Flames in terms of those overtime losses. But that's about it because <laughs> Jake Ottinger is just absolutely killing it this year with a 922 save percentage and a 2.31 uh, goals against average. He has been crushing it with just literally in every uh, advanced statistic there is. Jason Robertson has 37 goals this season leading the team. And then they did just acquire Max Domi as well. So I think that this team is kind of prepared for a postseason run that they didn't get to have last year. Now, I'm not entirely sure what Max Domi does anymore. I don't think he's anything uh, like he used to be, I don't think he's really that much of a difference maker. I think he's just kind of like an instigator. Um, but I <laughs> I wish that this had some sort of like encouragement or some sort of like playoff feel to it. Uh, instead, Flames fans are feeling rightfully defeated. I've seen everyone on the timeline talking about, oh, well, it's Ottinger and Markstrom, like, Okay, we've seen this before, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we have seen this before because at least with the playoffs last year, Markstrom was able to go out and deliver night after night. But here we don't really have that. You know, he's finally, he's finally finding his groove. I'm telling you, we knew as soon as Amanda had that baby that he was going to be Kind of like a, a, a sigh of relief almost. And it's so exciting to really, you know, have him have that baby and have him performing at a much better performance rate every night. But, oh, my God. <laughs> like, this is so bad, you guys. This is not fun. I hope for the sake of the Flames that they, they do win because I think if they lose six in a row, I think – uh, Sutter is going to fly the plane out of here himself. Wait, what if someone tells Sutter to go to like a different airport? What if like his van brings him elsewhere and the flames just get on the plane to their to Minnesota and then 
Daryl Sutter gets stuck in Dallas. I don't know. The Flames got to figure something out and how to, how to ditch him, how to ditch the dead weight because it's time. It's time. We we got to take things into our own hands here. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know what I I really think they got to do the locker room thing. They got to just barricade it. I put Nick Ritchie and Milan Lucic in one of those like hampers and park it in front of the door so they can't move it um figure it out i don't know but (laughs) tomorrow uh nick is back on the show and we will have your analysis of this game and of course really where where do the flames go from here because going into tonight they have a 25 percent chance of making the playoffs so We'll see how that goes, but thank you everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, Remember to subscribe to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts and of course uh, on YouTube as well, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.